Drink up and let's save some data on the player. Alright, we found ourselves back in Tilda once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding some data to the player so that we can save our custom drinking or a custom thirst on the player. This is of course the continued thirst system that we've started in the previous two tutorials. Once again, to sort of rehash the first tutorial, in the first tutorial, we added a custom key bind via the events over here. So we have a key bind, a drinking key. And then in the last tutorial, we worked through some networking over here, hopefully somewhat understandable. And now we're going to continue by adding custom data to the player. Now, once again, I want to reiterate that while this is going to be a roughly complete system for, you know, thirst, a thirst system at the end of the four tutorials. So we're going to have this one right here for the data saving. And next tutorial, we're going to do a custom HUD elements. After that, it's going to be working. However, once again, I want to say that you should not use this in a mod. You shouldn't just copy it over, put it into your mod and just use it. I highly recommend against it. Because not only are there still a few features missing from this, I think that there's one thing that actually doesn't 100% work. So this is really just an example of how you could do it, how you could approach it, and then it is for you to continue working on this and making this solid and robust. Whatever the case may be for our custom data saving, what we're going to need is a mixin. So we're going to go into all sorts of crazy things. So let's go into our mixin package, right click new Java class. This, this is going to be the mod entity data saver mixin so this is basically going to be a thing i've already done this previously so this is basically a class that i've already made in the previous two versions of my tutorials i think and we're going to use this to basically add nbt data to the entity class so for this we'll actually need in the util package a new interface and we're just going to call this the i entity data saver so this is basically how i choose to call it and this is going to have just one simple class over here nbt compound and this is going to be called get persistent data and that is all that we need for this interface and we never need to look at it again it's very important that you do not put this interface into the mixin package then it's not going to work it has to be outside of the mixin package and our mixin class over here first of all is going to be an abstract class and it will also implement the i entity data saver interface now to make a mixin, I will actually link in the top right corner the sort of mixin explanation video on how everything works. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how everything works here because this really is only focused on, well, basically continuing along with this. But you can see we need this add mixin annotation here on top of the class and we want to change the entity net micro entity class right here dot class. So this is basically how we want to do this and we want to add to it a private NBT compound called persistent data. Now that we've added this, we'll also add an override. So we're just going to say override get persistent data. And what we want to do here is we just want to say if this that persistent data is null. So if there's no data saved on this entity just yet, then we just want to make a new instance of some in compound NBT over here. And if there is already something in there, then we're just going to return the already existing persistent data. Now this of course needs to be somehow saved. And for that, I'm going to copy over the two injects I'm going to roughly explain what the frick is going on here. So in the entity class, if I middle mouse button click on this, we're going to be able to find the right NBT method, this one right here. And we're also going to be able to find, find the read NBT method. And for this, at the very top of this method, we're basically injecting right this here. So we're asking, hey, is the, does the NBT contain any count data? And if it does not, and if it does here, then we're going to read it. And then here, if the NBT data is not null, so if there is any NBT data, then we're also writing our custom NBT data into the NBT file that is basically being saved for our entity. That is the general like overview. As I've said, it's a very crude overview, but that is the general idea here so that we basically have access to an NBT compound for every entity. In our case, we're going to need it for the player to actually properly save the thirst data onto the player. Now, what we also need to do for our mixin is go into the tutorial mod mixin JSON file and actually specify the name here. So this is the mod entity data saver mixin. Very important that this is also written correctly, just like this class over here. And then we should be fine. And this should be pretty much functional at this point. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a helper class for this. So we're just going to do this in the util package. I'm going to call this the thirst data class and this is just going to have some static methods that are going to help me basically well add thirst and remove thirst so let's start by making the first method over here we're just gonna make this a public static int add thirst now this will take an i entity data saver 
this would be the player in this case and we're also going to put an amount of thirst that we're basically wanting to add. Now let's just copy over sort of like roughly line by line this particular method. First of all, we're just getting the NBT from the player. You can see because this is of course an I entity data saver. In this case, we can just get the persistent data from it and this is going to be an NBT. Now we're getting an integer called thirst from this NBT and we're just saving it in a particular integer right here. Then we basically want to check whether or not the thirst and the amount that we're adding towards it is bigger or equal to 10. And then we're just setting it to 10. So this is basically looks something like this. Might be a bit complicated at first, but when you really think about it, the only thing we're checking here is that if the amount that we're adding on to this thirst is bigger or equal to 10, we're just making it this equal to 10. Otherwise, we're just going to add it. Now, you could also do this with a max method call from the math. I do usually prefer to do it like this because for me, it's a little bit more understandable looking at it like this. But once again, a math max method would also totally work in this case. Then I want to resave the NBT data. This is, of course, working with nbt.put under the under the thirst name and then just adding in thirst. And this is, of course, the modified thirst variable right here. So either having added the amount here or setting it to 10 in this case. We also want to then sync the data. So we're not going to be able to do this just yet. And then at the end here, we just want to return the thirst. And that would be the add thirst method. Now, because the remove first method is e incredibly similar, I'm just going to copy over the entire method. You can see here the sync here, of course, does not quite work just yet. We have to implement some other stuff for that in just a moment. But for the time being, we're just going to basically ignore this. But you can see it's pretty much the same method, right? We're getting the thirst here. And here we're just checking whether or not the amount would be lower than zero. And then we're just capping it at zero. Otherwise, we're removing the thirst and then saving it once again. So nothing too crazy. And these are pretty much the two, well, the two methods that we need. All right, so this is pretty good already. Now let's go into the drinking packet, right? So this is the drinking packet. And now we have the actually add water level to player. Well, we can now do this, right? By doing thirst dot thirst data dot add thirst. And we can say, well, well, player dot, and then we need to cast it to an I entity data saver. Now we can do this because, because anything can be cast to any interface. And because we know that the player entity is an entity, we know that the I entity data saver can be basically used. So that's going to be very good. We then want to get the persistent data from this. And then we just want to say one. So we're basically increasing the thirst data amount for this particular player by one. And that's pretty much all that we need to do. To output how much thirst the player has, let's actually do this after the player drank the amount. I think that that makes a little bit more sense. So let's just say after this player dot send message once again, we're going to say text dot Let's do a literal this time just so that we have something displaying and we're just going to say thirst and then I entity data saver again, right? The player. Then we want to get the persistent data. We want to get the int called thirst and that is pretty much all that we want to do. Now we can also, of course, still make this a little bit nicer to look at. So let's just make a fill style, do style.empty and then let's give, give it a color. Let's take this color. Let's do formatting. And let's choose aqua this time. And also let's actually make this display in the action bar. That's going to be a little bit more interesting. So this is going to be outputting the current thirst level of player. So now our four things that we wanted to do here are done. We're first notifying the player that, you know, we're drinking water. Then we're playing the drinking sound. We're then adding the data to the player, right? So we're basically increasing the thirst by one. And then here we're also outputting how much, you know, thirst level the player basically has. Now, just for the sake of argument, let's also output how much thirst the player has when we are not drinking anything. You know, it doesn't make any difference, basically, and we can still do this. Now, here at the very end, we probably also want to synchronize the thirst as well, just in case. But we can just do this after we're actually implementing the synchronization. Now, in this case, this would actually already work. If I'm not mistaken, this should already save the data properly. However, there is one thing that it, of course, doesn't do. Like, the thirst actually doesn't decrease. So for that, we're going to make a server tick event. And this is basically one of the reasons why we do need the synchronization, because this now happens on the server. So in our event package, we're going to right-click new Java class, and we're going to call this the player tick handler. This will actually implement the server tick events dot start tick, the interface right here. We're going to hover over this implement method. It's going to implement one particular method over here. You can see the on start tick method. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy over the entire contents of this, but they should be fairly self-explanatory. So we're basically looping through every single player that is currently on the server. And then we're just making a new random float over here, basically saying, hey, 
if this float is smaller or equal to 0.005, then what we're going to do is then we're going to basically remove one first from a player. And we're also going to make this display for that particular player. Now to initialize this server tick event over here, we need to go to our tutorial mode class and we're just going to say server tick events dot start tick event dot register and then making a new player tick handler over here. Now, as I've mentioned, this is a very crude way of actually really removing this, right? This is just random. It takes nothing into account, right? It doesn't count anything or similar. This is why I said, you know, the drinking system does work, but it is definitely not complete and not usable in an actual mod. This really is just for demonstration purposes only. But now we have an issue where this remove thirst over here is actually called on the server. Oh no. Now this is also called on the server, but the issue is that nowhere has it told the client that anything is happening. Now, in our case, at this point, we should not actually be able to notice this if we go into the game. So let's, for the sake of argument, go into the game, see if this works, and then see where the pitfalls might lie. All right, so if we find ourselves in Minecraft again, you can see we already had this remove first. Very interesting. So if I, oh, we got a two there, actually. So there's no water around right now, but you can see in the middle here, thirst is zero. So let's see if I just drink a little bit. You can see it actually does increase. And if I, you know, look for it again, you can see thirst is eight. Now, as soon as we decrease, right, let's just wait for a second. There we go. We should now have, you know, you have six now, you can see. So to remove thirst and then, of of course, we have six. So let's just wait for another remove for this point, And then it should be five. There we go. So that definitely does work. And that's pretty cool. If we actually go outside of the world and we enter back into it, now it should also save this. So, so if we don't get unlucky and the thirst removes itself again immediately at the beginning of the server, we should have thirst five exactly how you would expect it to. That is, of course, because of the mixin, right? The NBT data is properly saved and everything is working totally fine. Now, as I've said, this now sort of works because the data is being saved. However, it is not properly synchronized to the client. Now we're probably going to just keep it like this and we're going to see that issue manifest when we add the HUD later down the line because the HUD is going to be client only and therefore basically we need the synchronization after that. But overall, that's already pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, that basically concludes this tutorial right here, right? Saving some data on the player and it does work really, really well. Like I said, currently the actual Thirst data is not synchronized to the client. However, we're going to fix that in the next tutorial, which you can watch immediately after it is available right here. And I hope I'll see you there. So yeah.